breakthrough don't come to your what? To your hands. They come to what? To your position. So when offense come, you, are, you, you, you get spiritually what? removed from your position. Be seated. Hallelujah. Let us go to Philippians. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Thank you, worship team. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do, for his good pleasure. I want us to look at the word, work out your salvation. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, salvation, it is not a fluke. It is not something that just falls on your lap without you being intentional. Pastor, I mean, why are you telling me this because I'm saved? I'm not teaching you to be saved. I'm teaching you to work out your salvation. Being intentional on what you are saving God for. Being intentional on what God has called you for. What is to work out in your salvation? You need to make an effort on what you believe God for. I'm not talking about gains. I'm not talking about material world. I'm talking about you growing spiritually. You know, most of the things that we need in our lives are not delayed because God does not love us. It's because we have not yet reached the state of maturity in Christ where God wants us to be. I'll give you this example. No matter how much I love my son, no matter how much I love him, I can never buy him a Porsche, a Lamborghini now at the age of 14. He has not yet reached the stage to receive that. I won't even go and buy him a townhouse and say, my son, I love you so much, this is your house, go live by yourself. No, he has not yet reached that stage. He has not yet matured. To, so there are certain things that, are, that we don't have, not because God doesn't want to give, because we are not yet where he wants us to be. Hallelujah. And these are the truths that the children of God don't want to hear. Hallelujah. Work out your salvation. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, saying, you, you, you have always been obedient in my presence. I'm much more happier to hear that even in my absence, you are obedient. They are not obedient because they see Paul. They are obedient because they have worked out their salvation. They now have a personal relationship with God. Hallelujah. So some of the things for us to have, we have to be intentional and purposeful. What is the, who am I in Christ? When Christ look at me, what does he see? Does he see an evangelist? I'm just making an example. Does he see a, a teacher, a Mr. Mkhoti? Does he see a pastor? Whom does he see? Does he see somebody who serves the church? Or does he see someone who's still trying to find himself? On the area of obedience, what does Christ see in me? Am I an obedient child or am I that 
naughty child who's always sitting in the naughty corner. Who am I in the gospel? If I'm working out my salvation, what is it that I'm doing right now today that will make a difference in the gospel and in the lives of other brethren? If the world look at me today, will they want to come and serve my God? Working out your salvation. You see, salvation is not a fluke, as I said. People who got saved in the tent, in the big tent meeting, they got saved in the big tent meeting because they went to the tent. Let's, let's start there. They did what? They went to the tent. Those who got saved by listening to the sermon and TV is because they did what? They listened. Those who got saved because you stopped them and spoke to them is because they, were, they did what? They stopped. So there is always an intention in salvation. And that intention is also from your part. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Are we together? Can we just list, can we just read Proverbs 24? Proverbs 24, 30 to 31. Proverbs 24, 30 to 31. I went by the field of the lazy men and by the vineyard of the men devoid of understanding. 31, and there it was all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. This is the picture of a child of God who is not waking in his or her salvation. This person is like a lazy person whose vineyard, whose garden is overgrown, no thorns. Meaning that the chances of bearing fruit in that vineyard are what? Slim. And also say the wall is broken. The chances of that person being protected are also what? Slim. Why? The prayer life. The word life, the fellowship life, the giving life, the saving life, all those things when they are combined, they give you what? Your vineyard. You see, I went to the vineyard by the field of slothful. Who's a slothful? A slothful is a lazy man, devoid of understanding. That man does not have revelation of how to work out their own salvation because they are not in the way. They lack things where things are just there under the soil. The vineyard is saying that they have to be cultivating. You cultivate by what? By prayer. You, you nourish by what? By the word of God. So how is your vineyard, child of God? Is it full of thorns? Because when it's full of thorns, you, it, it, you end up, it ends up causing what? Harm to you. What, what, what do you mean by thorns? Where people make wrong decisions because they are devoid of what? Of understanding. They don't have the revelation of the word of God. They are making wrong decisions that became what? Thorns for their lives. They walk. And sit down and remove a thorn. When they sit down, they are sitting on top of a thorn. While they are busy sitting down, the wall is broken. There is no protection. So we need, as children of God, to be intentional with our salvation. Yes, the grace has started its work. By his grace, we are saved. 
But where, where to from here, church? Because these are the times and seasons that we are, the church is, look, is not looking for slothful person. Lazy people who can't wake up and pray. Who can't sit down for the word. I want you to write this to one down. If you know that come month end, you know that you have to go and pay your dues. You need, also, you need to also be diligent. Come end of the day, let me go and pay my dues with God, studying the word of God, hearing what God is telling me. Where do I go? Because there are certain situations in our lives God wants you to give you direction, but he can't because your Bible is closed. He wants to talk to you, but the Bible is closed. There is no word that is coming to you from him. All that is hearing is grumbling, whining, and complaining. That's why this morning God is saying, be intentional in seeking my counsel. Be intentional in seeking my voice. Work in your salvation. Work in your salvation. Work out your salvation. We, we have that stage of you being a baby Christian is over. Unless of us you were saved yesterday. I mean, I don't have a problem. Me and Pastor don't have a problem. We, don't, we know how to hold people's hands. We have done that before. We can hold your hand until you grow. Many who came here, they didn't have the faith that they have. We don't know how to give up on a person. We don't know how to do that. We, we, we will call you until your, your, phone, your phone ran out of airtime of receiving our calls. If there is such. <laughs> we will call you until, until you are. We will do it. That, that's who we are. But now, you need to do something. Your Bible must be opened. On was it Friday? Uh, hospital, adopt a hospital. Was it Friday? Yeah. I'm seated with my family. It was after I just studied the word. In fact, I was listening to the word of God. Or just listening with the earphones. Holy Spirit said to me, can I have 10 minutes with you? I said, okay, I'll stand up. I'm going. I went to the room. He said, okay, just pray in the spirit for 10 minutes. I prayed in the spirit for 10 minutes. He said, I'll tell you what to do. I prayed in the The moment When I finished, he said to me, said, send out this message. Tell my people to adopt a hospital. And pray for the hospital. Because it is the hospital that needs more covering. So we, if the ground is sanctified, the people live. What, 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 what am I saying? It's almost the same as your life. Your life is like a vineyard. Are we together? If you become intentional in rooting out the weed from the vineyard, Cutting out the thorns. Rooting out the weed, cutting out the thorns, checking the wall, the, your stone wall, whether the stone wall is still intact or not. You'll start seeing fruits in your life. Am I talking to someone? The, the time for complaining about life in Christ is over. That's why God said, work out your salvation. Look, say neighbor, work your field. Don't be devoid of understanding. Otherwise, your vineyard will be overgrown with thorns. Am I talking to someone? Did you hear what I've just said? Second Timothy 2.22. Let us go there quickly. Second Timothy 2.22. 
Second Timothy two twenty two. Flee youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 23. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. <laughs> what is the key word there? Flee. Pursue. Meaning, there are things that will come to you as you are working on your salvation. It is your responsibility to flee. It is your responsibility to intentionally guard the anointing in you. Am I talking to someone? It is your responsibility to protect what God has deposited in you. And my brother said, pursue. What to pursue peace? We, 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 we preached about peace last Sunday, right? I'm going to continue with it. Why do, why do you pursue peace? Do you pursue something that is with you? No. If you know that every time when you are angry, you say wrong things, Death and life lies where? In the power of your word? In the spiritual realm, there is no joke. Number one, if you say it, you will have it. Number two, in the spiritual realm, there is no I was angry. You say it, you will have it. In the spiritual realm, there is no I was excited. You will say it, if you say it, you will have it. So what do you do? You pursue you meaning that you intentionally think about what you are about to do. You intentionally think about what the consequences of your words and your action. You intentionally apply your mind in comparison with the word of God. Because the Bible, the, this book of the law, it is there to guide you. You know, one thing that you will laugh at, men do that a lot. A man can go and buy a table with instruction on how to assemble it. He'll be struggling with the instructions, I said. <laughs> you know that, Mr. Mkhoti, eh? All the screws, everything will be messed up. You'll find that after, after assembling the table, the table is standing like this. <laughs> And then after that, where are the instruction mark? And then check this. Oh, this way we missed it. Not that there was no instruction in the box. Men just want to prove a point that I'm a man, I can do it without instruction. And I'm one of them. <laughs> so the same applies to our lives. You'll find that your life is chromiso. But the instruction manual is there. Is the word of God. And after that, when you grow, you, you don't go to the word of God. You pick up the phone. What's happening? This and this and this. I come. Let's meet for coffee. <laughs> Your friend goes, we're using a table, ne? and cut the leg to make the table straight. The table is not straight because of the cutting. But the word of God builds you up. Am I talking to someone? What does the word of God does? So God won't call you to cut. He can only uproot that which is not supposed to be there. So follow the manual. Be, make a decision today. That in whatever that happens in my life, my first contact is my Bible and prayer. And if I don't know what to do about it, we are here. You, you hear that? Everybody who is testifying, they will say, I went and asked for counsel. And I went, for, we cannot deceive you. 
as your pastors. We won't. You'll never hear me say, hey, my daughter, put your money here. You know, we are 1,000, uh, my daughter, especially if it's 3,000 and above, <laughs> you will see signs and wonders. <laughs> no. We'll always point you to the cross. We will always point you to what the blood of Jesus can do for you. Am I talking to someone? So we need to, he said, flee. We need, believe you me, I'm talking to everybody. Here. Break away from a sin that is entangling you. A sin that is delaying you. Because there is, Satan is a master manipulator. He knows the area of weaknesses that is entangling you. It can be a sin of anger. It can be a sin of cursing. It can be lust. It can be whatsoever. It can be strife. Because strife is a sin. There are those people who, who just want to see themselves fighting. You wake up on a little hot. Okay, I can see why you have peace. You are happy that my things are not going well, man. <laughs> it's a trap of Satan. He knows that this one, if I want to open the door to steal from their life, I must push my agenda this particular sin. So if you are not intentional in breaking that cycle, what are you doing? You are passing it over to the next generation. Can I repeat that? If you are not intentional in breaking the cycle through true repentance, what are you doing? You are passing it over to the next generation. That's why the importance of working in your salvation can never be overstressed. It is important that you do that. It is important that you do that. No, know you. As you know you, compare yourself with Christ. If Christ was supposed to react in this situation, what will he do? And how do you compare yourself with Christ? Go for the word. Go for the word. To stop listening to people. Ah, no baba kobanje. No. We were talking about something with Mr. Ngoven that there are people who get praised for being angry. Ah, once that person. Yeah. He kicks everything, a dog, a chicken, a door, a person, everything gets kicked. We are praising a person that's for that And the next thing that person gives birth to a child. Who are supposed to stop it? The father who's getting the beating. I, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, it's the truth. It's, the Bible says, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness. Check this. What, what is to pursue righteousness? God has given us a blanket check of grace. You say, Jesus Christ, you are my righteousness. I need the grace to get out of this. This sin has entrapped me. I'm tired of progressless in my life. Because Satan is not using multi multiple of weapons against people. One sin, he knows that this, this one, I'll pin, I'll pin her or him down with this. There will never be progress in their life. But the Bible is saying, but pursue righteousness. Who, who are we? We are the righteousness of God in Christ. So when you pursue the word of God, you are pursuing righteousness because the word of God will make you righteous. 
the word of God will break the cycle of any sin that, that easily entangles you. And how does it do it? You shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Set you free. I always say this every time. Every time when I go to my spiritual father, I'm, I'm always prepared to, to hear what I don't want to hear, but what I need to hear. Amen? Because if you are around people who tells you what you want to hear instead of what you need to hear, please just know that you and stagnation are friends. Must I continue? Give up offense. 23 say, but avoid foolish ignorant disputes. How does foolish and ignorant dispute come through? Offense. Give up. Oh, avoid foolish, ignorant, not questioning, disputes. Knowing the gender strives. It is easy to be offended. Believe you me, we are all human. But what we miss is what we lose when we are in the state of offense. Can I repeat that? It's easy to be what? To be offended. But what we miss is what? What we lose when you are where? In the state of offense. Because that's where... Hutlata evangelist Satan. <laughs> he will come and evangelize to your brains. Whom does Mr. Tusi think he is? How can he tell you to an Oyekele Masikoin? Who is he? Yeah, you see, even this gospel, that one that I'm telling you about, you'll start seeing everything wrong. I love. When I was still a young Christian, before I can even marry Pastor T, but we were quoting by then under the same pastor. There was a time that I was so offended in the church. So that when when Pastor was preaching, I was shaking tenses. <laughs> I won't tell you how offense can make you stupid. And the correctness of the language. And also searching that maybe he might be talking about Sakane. No, that one. Ah, that one is for Mavis. Ah, that one I know, Kia Mavis. That one. Ah, that one I know. Ah, that one is for Brendan. The, and after that, when he speaks, when Pastor leaves, I mean, he, he was a busy man, very busy. When he leaves, you will even forget to say goodbye to me and my wife. And you will say goodbye to the family that is next to his car, which is obvious because he has to say goodbye because they are next to him. He said, okay. He passed me and went to say goodbye to them. Those are far. He sat me down. He told me where to get off. Strong. <laughs> I intentionally chose to leave offense. I went home, I prayed and said, Father, uh, forgive me for judging your servant. Whether he's right or wrong, you are the one who called him. Be the one who correct him, not me. And from there I was free. And guess what happened next? He was marrying us. So, Satan uses offense and strife to move you out of your breakthrough. He, he knows when your breakthrough is around the corner. And he knows who's the carrier of your breakthrough. He knows who carries the grace of, for your breakthrough. And he knows that when that, when, and if you can get that breakthrough, generations behind you will be changed. 
And he doesn't want to change on generations. He wants to keep you there. And he knows that if he can succeed in keeping you there, all generations will be where? There until somebody gets saved. Now I'm talking to someone. So, give up offense. Intentionally. It's not easy. I'm going to be honest with you. There are times that I was in a meeting and I could feel that I want to best, I want to respond, I want to tell them, Mr. T will tell you. Sometimes they are too smart. Yeah. So, yeah. So I wanted to respond like, yeah. Holy Spirit said, remember who you are. Don't allow the world to respond through you. Go home. Don't respond. Pray about it. As I pray about it, I came back with wisdom. So my offense was replaced with what? Wisdom. Wisdom of what? Of the Holy Spirit. When they talk, they say, no, I... I believe that we can do it better if we look at this direction. And guess what? There was the Holy Spirit. Nobody, the Bible said, when they were stoning Stephen, the more he spoke, they closed their ears. Why? Because they could not resist his wisdom. When you give up offense and intentionally seek the wisdom of God, no person can resist the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was very young. At the age of 12, he was sitting by the synagogue with the high priest. The Bible says they were baffled. They were astonished by his wisdom because he knew what the scriptures. He knew, they say he knew the letters, meaning the scriptures. So where do you get this? So if you want to get rid of offense, go for the word. I once gave my son a task, read one Proverbs a day, one chapter a day. So I'm giving you a task. Go and read one chapter a day of Proverbs. You will know how to respond to situation. And also, this is what we do all the time. If strife is coming your way, I don't know why I'm stuck on strife, because I want to continue. And you are offended. Ask yourself this question. What is it that I've prayed for? Because normally these things happen when your breakthrough is around the corner. Remember, you don't receive the breakthrough. Breakthrough don't come to your hands. They come to your position. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I repeat that again? Breakthrough don't come to your what? To your hands. They come to what? To your position. So when offense come, you are, you 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 get spiritually what? Removed from your position. So Breakthrough came, you were not there. The wealth of the righteous, of the sinners, it is not theirs. That's my personal conviction. They are taking from those who are missing their breakthroughs. That's my personal conviction. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Break away from evil companions and evil plans of life. You are sitting with people. Every second word is a swear word. Or you know what they are saying is you want to come on a yellow bone. Pink bone, gray bone. 
I don't know. I don't know when did they perform the surgical operation and check at the bones of people. I wanna call a bone. I don't know how did they do that or whether they've got X-ray eyes. I don't know. Now, now your mind is contaminated. I will drive a little on one of the yellow bones. <laughs> the next thing you are stopping the car, you want to know the name and the number of the yellow bone. You are sitting with people, ah, you know, tall, dark, and handsome. You are married. You are in courtship. Yeah, what about strong a whole? The next thing I wanna, you want to experiment. You know, break away from evil. You know, th- I'm telling you that that is being intentional with your salvation. Don't be, don't be too lax. Don't be too lukewarm. Such, such that we're not to accommodate everything. Now that's why I've made a decision. My best friend is my wife. Now she knows. We sometimes. But I want to get in the car and drive away. I'll, I'll be so angry at her, she'll come and sleep here. That's, that's how far away, that's how, when we are fighting a lot. Or I'll go and play PlayStation. That, 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 that's my social distancing. <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere. I'll be there. So, so, the evil companions, what are you learning? You, you, since when are you a, a, a what, what, you st- learning about the structure of men and women? I should be far. I had a company, a business before God called me for ministry. We were doing a lot of work in construction. I was maintaining some stuff in a particular area, in a particular province. So one of the things that made me to stop, somebody came to me, we were in the meeting of business people, said, ah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And Satan started ministering unto me, you see, you get that tender, and then you'll tithe this much. So my focus was on the tithe. Wow. When I went to Holy Spirit, said, you're not going to contaminate the finances, your finances, because it is it's going to have an impact on generations to come. So, so some of the financial decisions that we make, they're going to affect our children. Corruption, bribery, and all that, they have an effect on generations to come. There are some people, they are, they are not struggling because, because they did wrong. They are struggling because somebody did wrong, and they don't know how to get out of that. But we can teach you. Do you know how to get out of that? You become intentional with your salvation. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Write this one down. Resist. all the glitters of this world and the temptations. Go back to God and persevere until the end for the sake of your salvation. I want to be honest with you. Money is important. Ecclesiastes says money answers all things. It's important. And how it comes is also important. (laughs) 
money that is contaminated is contaminating your spirit because it's your sweat. Your generation. Love the glitters of the world, but ask them from the Father. He knows what you need first. Hallelujah. Do you still love me? Do you still love me? I love you too. Proverbs 28, 14. Let's go to Proverbs 28, 14. We are left with 17 minutes to go. Proverbs 28, 14. Do you see now whenever I'm going, you are disturbing me. Don't play that song. Well, what's wrong with you? Happy is the man who is always what? Proverbs 28, verse 14. Proverbs 28, verse 14, Randy. What does he say? Can you read it? Who's, who's always what? Who always feareth, ne? But he that hardens his heart will what? Uh, I'm talking to you because some of you are resisting this. Some of you are resisting the weight. I know I was a DJ. <laughs> Proverbs 28, verse 14. There's one thing that I know. That munat is, te- is very temporary. It's like mulloa tissue. It bends so fast. But the next thing, when the wind comes, you don't even know what was burning. You are left with scars and pains. Allow the counsel of God to uproot you from every evil cycle. Don't harden your heart. God doesn't just release the word if it doesn't have a purpose for you. Why God is saying this? Let us go to John 14, 30. John 14, 30. I want you to see something. I want you to understand this. If you can catch this spiritual principle that I'm about to share with you now, I I allow you to to pray for, for 12 hours. I'll give you that permission. I will no longer talk much with you for the rule of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Uh, I love this. this. This is so deep. You know, when you, are in, when you intentionally work on your salvation, you are also intentionally removing any legal right that the enemy can have against you to harm you. Many of you don't know that we are living in a legal world. Spiritually, it's a legal world. That's why there is a court of heaven. The, when Jesus Christ said he has nothing in me, he's saying Satan is coming, but he has nothing that he can accuse me of. Why? He is the accuser of brethren who accuses them day and night. So what do you do? When you make it, let me tell you one thing. I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes. I'm not saying that you're not going to be perfect. You'll be super perfect. No, I'm saying put your trust in Jesus to perfect you. Allow the word of the Lord to perfect you. When you stand in the word of God, you will be like just like any other parent. If your child is bringing you water, you ask for the water, and your child trips and the glasses fall and fell and break, you're not going to be angry against your child because the, 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 she broke the glass. No. You'll be more concerned about the child who fell. Am, am I talking to someone? You'll be more concerned about what? Th- than, the grass, than the glass that, that, that is broken. Am I right? So that, that is the walk in Christ. Walk in such a way that Jesus Christ will see that this one is, is pursuing me. 
She's trying, but she's stumbling. But, you know, she, she's falling. You know, she's breaking some of my rules. But in her breaking, is she okay? Is my, my, is my, my grace is still sufficient for her. So, those are the, so I, uh, Jesus Christ said, Satan is coming, but there's nothing in me. Ephesians 4.27, Ephesians 4.27 said, do not give Satan a foothold. Others says, do not give Satan what? An opportunity. So when you intentionally work on your salvation, there are certain doors that are, can, can be closed instantly, not because you have done right, but because you've made a decision that you want to do right. Am I talking to someone? Because you have done what? You have made a decision that you want to do right. It's, it's a matter of a decision. Say, Father, I want to serve you with all my heart. I remember I used to drink. I was, I was addicted to, to alcohol. Such that even when I, was, when I was saved, I would still have wines in my cupboard and all that. So that I want the opportunity to, to drink wine now and then. Pastor T said to me, eh, Daddy, you need to make a decision. God or this? <laughs> I said, oh, auntie, I mean, now she's, now she's pushing it now. She's my wife, but here she doesn't have any right. But when I was alone, Holy Spirit said, <laughs> she was right. <laughs> you need to change in this area. I said, okay, you help me change. I said, okay, I'll help you change. He helped me change. One day I woke up and realized that, no, I don't need this. So certain changes will be effected in your life by your desire to change, not by your ability to change. Did you hear me? It's by your what? So desire to do good. Desire not to give Satan a foothold. Do not look at your ability. Because once you look at your ability, that's where Satan will minister unto you. Look unto the one who died for you. Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. Through that, the Holy Spirit. Ask him, Holy Spirit, only you can make me do the right thing. I want to do right here. And believe you me, some of you will get your breakthrough just by deciding. I've seen that happening to my life. When I decide to do something which is right, breakthrough just come. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.27, is it there? Yo. Neither give place to, a, to, to Satan. So, in other words, Satan does not have atom, automatic uh, what right on you. We give him the right. What does he say? Neither give. Others say do not give him what an opportunity. That's NIV, ne? or ESV. NIV says an opportunity. Say, neighbor, be intentional with this salvation of yours. Say, you are delaying God. He wants to do something with your life. Say, Mudimu Bato Tomakawena. Can I give you a picture of God before we can finish? God is like this rich, this rich parent who wants his children to be seen that he's got money. But this child is always drunk. Cannot be trusted with a Range Rover to go buy bread. Because that Range Rover might end up in Pumalang. Because the, the boy is irresponsible. He's forever drunk. Or he might not even come back home for the whole week. But the father wants people to see his, through his son that he's doing well. But the son... It's not what responsible enough for the father or the Honor So that's who God is to us. To us. He wants the world to see that I'm a good father. I'm a good God. 
I've got greater things for you. But he wants us to be, what? Say intentional. With our salvation. And be purposeful. With our salvation. Am I talking to someone? Can we just move quickly? Acts 4, 27. Acts 20, verse 27. Acts 20, verse 27. This I must teach today and finish. Acts 4, 27. So, Acts 20, 27. Why Acts 4? You know, yeah, I've been meditating on it the whole weekend anyway. Acts 20, verse 27. What does it say? For I have not shunned to declare to you what? The whole counsel of God. What is the whole counsel of God? When you are intentional with your salvation, you will always seek the whole counsel of God pertaining what your life. What does God want to do with my, for example, prayer life? What does God want to do with my relationship with my parents? What does God want to do with my relationship with my spiritual parents? What does God want to do with my finances? What does God want me to do with my relationship with the word of God? So the whole counsel of God is it's all about you understanding your purpose in the will of God. Are we together? There, there is a definition that in, in, the, in the, the whole counsel of God is, is all that God has revealed on any subject. So the whole counsel of God is all that God has revealed any subject. You know what? There is a counsel of God concerning how you speak. There is a counsel of God concerning your finances. There is a counsel of God concerning your prayer life. There is a counsel of God concerning your fellowship in the church. There is a counsel of God concerning every area of your life. So, we need to seek, for example, if you don't understand your faith level, be intentional in studying about faith. Go to the Bible. Read about men of faith. Okay, David, you are anointed a king when you are 16 years old. And for the next 14 years, you are running <laughs> with the anointing. You are sleeping in the cave. You are all over the place. You are running, but you are anointed as a king. Why, why did David have to run? No question the faith of David. Oh, God, God was strengthening David so that when he becomes a king, he's established in all spheres. He's established what? In all spheres, in every area of his life. So the anointing does not only bring the good things to our flesh. It brings the bad to our flesh and the good for our spirit man. Okay, let me repeat this. I'm just giving you a homework. Go and look at the life of David. You'll get the answer. The anointing does not bring the good to our flesh always. The, the, I'm telling you the whole counsel of God. You need to know this truth. So that when your flesh feels like it's suffering, when you are seeking the face of God, God will be revealing himself more in the other area in your spirit man. The perfect example is King David. The difference between Saul, Saul focused more on his flesh. What will people say? Samuel, I mean, I had to go and do this and leave the fattened one because people wanted to use them. You know, he wanted to please the flesh. People, when, whenever you want to please people, the flesh can, well, the flesh, carnality, pride. What will people say? But David, ha, made him well. He's in the cave. He got an opportunity to kill Saul. Doesn't do it. 
touch not my anointing, touch not the anointed of God. So what, what, was destroy, what was destroyed in David's life while Saul was in the cave? The ability to, to, to what? To destroy the anointing in the man of God. Even though David was right, he had to respect the anointing. So David has to be circumcised to such a level that it doesn't matter. Pass this test. Because when you're a king, you'll be surrounded by, by prophets. And you will be the prophet also of your own destiny. So the whole counsel of God, if I can put it this way, it will also tell you about the cross. It, what do you understand about the cross? You see, you are being teaching about your salvation. Okay, when Jesus Christ was in the, the thorns, I mean, it took me weeks to, to, when I studied the blood. I studied the blood for over five years. Just studying the blood only. It took, to understand the thorn on the, he said, it took me weeks. But why? why? Why the thorns? This one is saying this, this one is saying this, this one is saying this. The revelation came, okay, it's fine. I don't have pressure also in my life. You know, my, my brain has been delivered. My stress is gone. What is the whole counsel of God concerning you and the cross? What does the blood on the cross mean for you? How do you overcome in this situation, in this current situation of COVID? What does the cross say to you? When you understand this, you, you, you won't be ruled by fear. You won't be staying at home under the table, under the sofa, and under the bed, surrounded by sanitizers. There's somebody who said, I bought oxygen for in case. <laughs> yeah, so, but, okay, you, you understand that oxygen can work, but what will the blood of Jesus Christ do for you? Be intentional. Go study about the blood. Because if you, you know, check when Paul says, I've shunned not, I've, I've shunned not, but I've taught you the whole counsel of God. When I look at all the epistles of Paul, there is nothing that Paul did not cover from relationships to marriage to love. Everything is covered. But you as a child of God, you need to also make it an intention that, okay, I need to know what does God say about, what does the Bible say about dating and courting? What does the Bible say about marriage? What does the Bible say about looking for someone to marry? What does the Bible say about this? When you are intentional in this manner with your salvation, we'll go deeper when God gives us time. You, you are able to get to reap from every way that God has released become a fruit to your life. If God says, blessed be the one who does this, you know that he's talking about me. If God says, no, fear not for I'm with you, you know that I, that with you, he's with me, he's talking about me. Am I talking to someone? Am I talking to someone? So the, the issue for salvation taking a back seat and you acting up, being in the front seat, must be over. Because that's how the church behaves. Salvation takes a back seat, and we act up. We come to church, we lift up our hands, hallelujah. No, with, with, one, with one eye op, open, checking what we're going to do. Or no, little lie, at least all so okay. Give me some, hallelujah, okay, no. Hallelujah. We're acting up. God says, I don't look at the outward appearance, but I look at what? At the heart. Hebrews 4.12. For, 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 yeah, is the discerner of the intent and the attitude of the heart. And also, about the Holy Spirit. What, what do you understand about the Holy Spirit? You know, I, I'm, I, I'm giving you all, all this nuggets so that you can go home. You be intentional. Okay, you are saved. You are born again. But how far have you developed your relationship with the Holy Spirit? How do you relate with him? I was talking to someone. I don't know. They say, I said, I don't know how many times 
I tell the Holy Spirit, I love you so much. I acknowledge you. During the day you're driving, I speak to him all the time. But what is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Imagine I'm married to Pastor T. We speak once a week. We're in the same house. We speak once a week. Or twice a week. Yeah, Murat. Twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> Mondays and Wednesdays. After that, everybody's minding their own business. That's, that's how the church is treating the Holy Spirit lately. Holy Spirit, where are you? I need you. Holy Spirit, ambulance. Where, 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 where are you, my daughter? No. He's a person. Jesus Christ said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll leave you with someone like me. He will tell you all things. But how does he tell you all things? Relationship. A relationship. Say, neighbor, be intentional with your salvation. You mean the two spoke about it, about finances. You see? I can tell you here, how many of you has gone to the Bible and study about your relationship with the finances and God? But we know that money answers all things, right? If money answers all things, how does God want us to relate with money? Hmm? How do, because you, 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 you can chase money. I'm telling you, money is like a rabbit. If you chase it, it will run. And if you're a human being like me, you won't catch it. Because you can't, you can't catch a rabbit with your own. That's why you need dogs. How do you relate? Remember now, I'm saying to you, when you are intentional with your salvation, everything about you, everything about you must be pushed back to God. Am I talking to someone? Now you push back to who? To God. Go for the word. Go check out. God, what are you saying? Second Corinthians 9.10, I give seed to the sower. Okay, God, if you say you give seed to the sower, who is the sower? Why do you call the sower a sower? You, uh, God, you say, eh, you give seed to the sower. Oh, my God shall supply all my needs. Okay, why did Paul say my God shall supply all my needs? Because many, many people call, call that scripture. But uh, the preceding verse says, but because you have given liberally, you have given to Paul, but, and Paul is releasing a blessing because, because they've given to him. He said, now because you have done that, my God shall. So go and study, check out the relationship with you and money. Find out the whole counsel of God concerning the finances with you. Don't just leave because you're a child. And then we only think God when it, when it suits us. No. Make it be purposeful in knowing how does God want me to relate with money. Because whether you like it or not, you need money. And also you need God. And to top it up, above all, you are not breathing money, you are breathing the oxygen that you have been given by God. So you seek God first. You find out how does he want me to relate with money. You just had a testimony. She had been talking to me, Pastor, this and this. I said, no. I'll just declare a word. And declare a word. I've given you the, the principles. I said, but really? Yeah, okay, Pastor. Because you believe it, I believe it. <laughs> you know, she was Bluetoothing my faith, if I can put it that way. Hot spotting my faith, yeah. That, that's hot spotting, yeah. And it worked. Because I was teaching you, this is how you relate with money. When you relate with money this way, God will show you that this is nothing. And she saw it. But how do you want to relate with money? Lastly, obedience and honor. How would you relate with your biological parents? How, how would you relate with your spiritual parents? Who are they to you? Can I tell you one thing? The biggest battle that I've ever fought in my life was connecting with my spiritual father, my spiritual parents. That relationship has been attacked a lot. And I know why Satan was attacking it. Because he knows the benefits. He, it's like uprooting a tree from the soil. If you, want to, if you want the tree to die, to stop bearing fruits, you don't have to go cut it. Just uproot it and leave it lying there. 
automatically it will wither. The biggest relationship that I've ever fought for in my life, ex ex except for my marriage, is the relationship with, with my spiritual parents. It's the one that has been attacked left, right, and center. And when I go to pray, and God said, no, it is not about you or them. It's about the benefits that are there. When you connect with them, you will see. Lirato, I've heard that she went to church to ignite. When she saw it, she said, oh, now I understand why a pastor is like this. We, we are small to ignite the grace, the order. But that relationship me, between me and him didn't come easy. It was attacked. Sometimes I will feel offended. Sometimes I feel like he doesn't love me enough. Only realize that is the enemy who is preaching. Why? He wants to remove me fr from the grace. Believe me, if you are listening to me, cherish the grace of your pastor wherever you are. The man that is praying for you, that is where your things are. You know, you, you did not choose your father, ne? Did you choose him? Who chose the father for you? Even, the, even your pastor you did not choose for. You did not choose them. The same, the same way that it happens, it, it's the same thing that happens spiritually. So the biological is, is emulating the spiritual. Do you understand? So if you can honor... Ephesians 6. So go, 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 go and be intentional. Okay, what does the Bible say about honoring my spiritual parents? Okay, please stand up. What are, okay, okay, what are the benefits of me having a good relationship with my biological parents? Know that. You, you, you are being intentional with your salvation. Know that. Be a well-rounded Christian. How do I honor my mother? Okay, when was the last time I did something good for my mother? Do you, know, do you know that even if you can go to your mother and say, Mommy, I brought you a stock suite. That stock suite can give you a breakthrough of a house because of the position of her heart that she's happy with you. I'm talking about your political mom. I'm not talking about Pastor T. Because when you go too much faith, that's like a package at the stock suite. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm talking about your, your, your biological mother. Just go to and say, I've got, I've got this. Or whatever that you say, mother, I've got this. So how about your spiritual parents? What will happen? I know what I'm talking about. I, that's why every time when I stand here, I, I make sure that you know that I honor them and I love them so much. Not, they, they are not super perfect people. But they are the ones that God chose to be my covering. And their grace is continuously at work in my life and my wife's life. So, what do you understand about the relationship with your pastor? Have you ever made an effort to, to, to study that? Do you, did you, have you studied the relationship between Paul and Timothy? Or Isaac and Abraham? We, we, we did that on, on, on the men's fellowship. If you're not joining the men's fellowship, you are missing out. You are missing out. It's, 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 yeah, no, we are, we are in a, in a online, but things are happening. We, do, we, we, we did that at Men's Fellowship, talking about sons learning the altars from their father and all that. So salvation is always intentional. Why? Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17. We are, we, are, we are closing now. Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17. I want to tell you why. The wise salvation is intentional and purposeful. There is somebody, that person joined the church, close to the pastor. I'm, I'm not telling you the real story, but I'm paraphrasing it. Got a bursary to pay for everything, school, decide that everything is fine, leave the church, the funds are withdrawn. God uses someone to do something for someone. That, that's how it works. I've seen it with my life. Thine eyes did see mine, mine and form substance. I, that English rendi, yeah, MBA. Rendi, can I read my, my metric English here? <laughs> eh? Psalm 139, eh? 
Randy, you with your, your MBA, you and Mr. Tengani with your MBA English, can you please come to our level, guys? You are, you are flying too high. <laughs> For your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. In your book, they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as there were none of them. Are you aware that you are a living word? <laughs> Do you know that? That your life has been pre-written. You are living under what I call the predestined will of God. So the predestined will of God has got principles. That's what I was sharing with you about. Why? Because I want you to, to be that which has been written of you. Even when Jesus Christ came, he said, I have come as the written of me in the volume of books. Referring to what? From the Old Testament. So even, even, even the David is saying, the days were ordained. They were all written. Even the days were ordained for me. When yet there was none of them. If I can put it in simple today's English, you are living in a prepaid life. It has been paid already. You, your responsibility is to live according to what? To the word. Why? The word of God will always unleash and release that which has been written of you. Are we together? God loves you so much. Let me, let, I, I, I gave an example of a rich father. I thought, I can't go that's what God wants to do. He wants to shine with, with his children. He wants people to know that that one belongs to me. He wants people to know, as I said before, that a rich father is very rich, but the son is poor here. The father can't trust him with anything. He's got Range Rovers, he's got Bentley, he's got everything that only if my son was fine, I would just give him the keys. Go wherever you want to go. Please take your sisters to school. Use this one. But until my son becomes fine, I cannot trust him with my wealth. God is saying, until we become intentional with our salvation, he cannot trust us with certain things. The son is only given basics. You know, at least got a house to live in. He can come back home and eat. When he wants to take some money, he can give it. He can get it. But there is more that God wants to release upon our lives. Hallelujah. There is more as it is written of you. God wants to do that. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and begin to talk to your father. Talk, talk to him. You know, I can advise you. Just, 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 can we just pray for the grace? Pray for the grace to be intentional in our salvation. So that we can also understand the whole counsel of God concerning every area of our lives. Because he loves us. He wants to do something great for you. Talk to him. Lift up your voice. Father, we thank you. Setariko shirabekesa. Mbariko zandi mbake. Pezi yandi roko sitarikashia. Lord, I thank you have spoken. And Father, I thank you that this word shall not come back to you void. This word, Father, shall always accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that you send it to. I thank you, mighty God. I give you the glory. I give you the honor, the praise and adoration. You are faithful, God. We bless you, mighty God. We bless you, Father. Yes, Lord, we honor you. Yes, Lord, we honor you. We honor you, mighty God. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Daddy. We bless you, mighty God. You are spoken. Let this word, mighty God, bear fruits in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What will you come? I don't want to. I always believe that when God wants to do something great, He always releases 
a preceding word that will prepare a way. Hallelujah. So when you are intentional, make sure that you do what's supposed to be done. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. Do you know why? God loves you. Hallelujah. Can I declare a word in your life? I see you moving higher and higher. I speak open doors upon your life. I speak breakthroughs upon your life. May that obstacle, that obstacle that is standing on your way, be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. May that obstacle be removed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every storm in your life to quieten down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every storm to stop. May you begin to live the life that God has ordained you to live. I declare that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, group A.